Hello, people from in, in Budapest. Hello, people in the world. <laughs> you said that both of these are red. But if you look closely, you can see that they're different shades, aren't they? Just because they might be the same color doesn't mean they're exactly the same. So it seems like that they are all playing the same game, but with different goals. U.S. is interested in North Korea's regime changes. North Korea is interested in regime security. Russia has traditionally maintained a position that wishes the reunification of the peninsula, a peaceful one. And actually, new regionalism is, to me, to my understanding, is a kind of clear distinction between um, state-led regionalism and not only state, but in try to accommodate many different actors. That is something with new regionalism. Keeping in mind what I've said about China's interests, and concerns, keeping in mind what I've said about what has driven Russian policy towards Central Asia, and keeping in mind, in light of the Western dilemmas. This is a two-way interaction there, like if Russia provides resources to China for, for its a Chinese market, China needs the resource from Russia, and if China doesn't have other sorts of resources and it starts to become dependent on on Russia, that's codependent, so yeah. they actually both become vulnerable to a breakdown of economic relations between the two. Confucianism possibly play in all that, whether or not we, we will try to assess if Confucianism actually accommodates authoritarian regimes or this is just something that um, is not true. But what value are they going to use? So, I'm just raising question. You have to be very, very careful when you analyze that is culture, that is um, historical legacy. When thinking about its ties to both North and South, it has tried to think of how both Koreas would benefit from Russian exports or how Russia could benefit from projects that would involve both Koreas. And I think that the two uh, projects that have kept Russia's uh, mind busy with regard to the Korean Peninsula strategy, a strategy of containment. But before we explain to you what containment is, we will tell you what it is not. Considering the necessity to improving the situation in North Korea with the hope of change occurring in the future, engagement is a more effective approach than containment. This makes our choice of diplomatic strategy obvious. <laughs> Hello, Budapest. North Korean people I do is very strong and it's very difficult to block their ideas by the way of embargoes or resolutions. How do we isolate uh, uh, North Korea when its three neighbors do not want it isolated? South Korea does not want to isolate North Korea, China does not want to isolate North Korea, Russia does not want to isolate North Korea. Well, everything you're arguing is basically strengthening the regime. You are just enforcing the system of threats for payoffs. North Korea launches a few missiles, bombs a few islands, and they get aid in exchange. I want to say hello and to everybody, and uh, you made some good <laughs> you, made some, you made some good points uh, on each side. Uh, we are pro-engagement, and we want to bring up a point that uh, it wasn't discussed uh, by any of the parts, uh, that of the uni unification. We do not advocate war. We don't want to provoke military conflict with the regime, but it is our understanding that since the policy of engagement hasn't provided any results so far, it is time for a change.